you all for coming. One more round of applause for the City Council President. choices and now there's one clear choice and so I am so proud that we are representing the coalition among all of our Boston City Councilors and, and colleagues at the state level, former former electeds, uh, those who have served our communities who are saying this is a person who we can trust and partner with as an ally. We're here with a coalition that includes labor, the working people of our city and our commonwealth who need fighters, champions for them, who are going to be there when the cameras are off and in at the, the tables where decisions are made, where we will have no question whatsoever what their values are and who they're fighting for. We're here with grassroots activists representing leadership on issues like housing and economic mobility and, and equity and transportation. And uh, this is a moment that really matters in the history of our politics and of our state. And we can't afford to get complacent because we feel like the Democrats just gonna take it all the way in and therefore, you know, phone it in or mail in your ballot and be done. This is a, a situation where Diana has scraped and fought and spent down every dollar in the primary and needs our help now to replenish, to recharge, to have her back in the same way that she's gonna have our back for the next four years and beyond. So um, I'm really proud to be standing with a fighter, a champion, a friend, and someone we know we can trust sending off into to Beacon Hill and making sure that she's gonna hold everyone accountable on behalf of the taxpayers and working families of this city and this commonwealth. Proud to introduce our next auditor, Senator Diana Gisolio. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Councilor Flynn. Thank you so much, Mayor Michelle Wu. Uh, and thank you so much to everybody for coming out here tonight to support my candidacy for state auditor. I cannot do any of this without your support. So I want to first and foremost start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you for coming out, uh, for all the work that you've done up to this point. And I'm going to thank you in advance for all the work that I hope we will do together moving forward uh, to November 8th to have a successful uh, election. Uh, a little bit about myself, and most of you know my story, but some of you don't. I was born to a 17-year-old single mother. I grew up housing insecure. We moved around a lot when I was a kid, mostly between the gateway cities of Methuen and Lawrence, depending on where my mom, who was a young nurse's aide at the time, could find work. I ended up graduating from the public school system and going off to community college, which was an associate's degree I was able to afford thanks to our legislature's investments and state government's investments in families like mine. From there, I ended up uh, earning scholarships to become the first in my family to graduate. I know what it's like to struggle. Thank you. Um, like so many families, I know what it's like to struggle and to have to be scrappy to make ends meet. We need a state auditor who understands the challenges that working families are facing every day with the cost of inflation. Inflation happening right now, we have uh, gas prices increasing. We have folks that are struggling to find housing. When I was a kid, my housing circumstances were due to my own personal family circumstances, but now you have college educated folks who are working two or three jobs uh, and multiple incomes coming in and they're still struggling to find housing in the communities that they're working hard to serve. That is unacceptable. We need to do better, friends. And we need a state auditor who understands those challenges and has those lived experiences. I will bring my 10 years of service in the state legislature fighting for transparency, accountability, and equity to the role of state auditor so that all families can do better. Still learning to pause for these applauses here. <laughs> uh, so that all families in Massachusetts, regardless of our family background, our bank balance, or our zip code, have access to and accountability from our state leaders and state agencies. Friends, we need a safety audit of the MBTA. Yeah. Where literally we 
we have trains catching on fire right now. We've not been making appropriate investments for years, and we need to make sure that we're making those robust investments. And we're passing the fair share amendment that we are making sure to fund our transportation system, but then after the fact that we're also making sure that we're tracking those dollars, that we're tracking the processes and procedures, and that we're holding folks accountable to make sure that our transportation system is equitable and accessible for all. And yes, I see our friend John Bussinger here, <laughs> the North-South Rail Link. Thank you for so much. Uh, but we need to do an MBTA safety audit, so that is on the agenda for one of the first things that we plan to do. We need to do an audit, I just mentioned housing, right? We need to look at DHCD, the Department of Housing and Community Development. We need to track, track those ARPA funds that have been coming in. I see my colleague in the House of Representatives, Mike Connolly here. Representative, thanks for your service. We know that we voted. Thank you. Yes, give a round of applause. We know that we voted on these ARPA funds coming back to these communities, but we need to make sure that those dollars are tracked. And even though we passed an amendment in the bill that would allow for those dollars to be tracked, uh, hopefully in real time fashion, the auditor is gonna have to make sure that that's actually getting done. And that folks are being held accountable on that spending and that those dollars are going to where they need to go. We're looking at those community development block grants. It's one thing if we check all the boxes, and I see Josh Dacom in the house, a housing advocate, right? So we, uh, it's, it's, I know we're all giving all of our rounds of applause. But it's one thing, right, Josh, if we check all the boxes and we say, this housing project cost $500,000, we did what we were supposed to do, and then everyone pats themselves in the back, and then we, we walk away and say, well, great job. It's a completely different thing and a different conversation when you find out that you potentially could have done that project for half the price at $250,000, right? Because then that extra two fifty dollars gets to go towards what? Towards housing another family in need. So every dollar saved, every penny saved is another child's future opportunities that we get to invest in. It's another housing initiative that we get to invest in. It's another person who could potentially get access to life-saving health care. It's another uh, climate change initiative that won't get glossed over, that won't get punted into the future. We need to audit the Department of Public Utilities and make sure that we're holding them accountable on reaching our climate goals. We passed the Next Generation Climate Bill here in the state of Massachusetts quite a while ago now at this point. And what's been happening is the administration has been dragging its heels on actually implementing those policies that we passed. We need to make sure that the administration is being held accountable so that we meet our climate goals, not just for our generation, but for generations to come. There is so much work that needs to get done when it comes to investing in our communities. And I hear folks all the time you know, look at me and say, why would you ever leave being a senator to go be an auditor, right? And I have someone who works in the auditor's office here to say that happens all the time. But friends, the auditor's role uh, is not a bean counting position in you know, a back room somewhere, which is the joke that's often made with me when people also accompany that comment with, well, don't audit me. <laughs> um, we do not audit, we're not the IRS, we do not audit individual taxpayers, we do not go out and audit your small business. That's not what the auditor does. The auditor holds state agencies accountable to all of you, the taxpayers, who are working hard for those tax dollars and the only thing you're asking in return is that you know how those tax dollars are being spent and that they're being spent as efficiently and effectively as possible and that they're not being wasted with mismanagement occurring. And that is something that I commit to you that I will do. I will be your watchdog. I will be your advocate. I will be your chief accountability officer to make sure that those dollars are going to where they need to be going on your behalf. But I can't do that without your support. So tonight, I do respectfully ask you for your vote. I ask you to sign up to take a sign. Uh, and our team is here. Emma's going to be right at the front table on the way out. You can sign up to take a sign. And I want to say thank you so much for your contributions tonight. Uh, a lot of folks have said, well, you're a Democrat in Massachusetts. You're a shoe in That is not the case, friends. We cannot take this for granted. How many times, and think, and I'm not going to call out specific races and position anybody, but think about the times when we took our races for granted and ended up losing. I will just think of one, 
and it's a presidential race, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, a lot of us have thought, you know, well, you know, a lot of folks will think, well, my vote doesn't count, uh, you know, uh, the Democrats are gonna win, or this is Massachusetts, or whatever it is. Uh, this is not a federal level race, this is a state level race, and I will tell you, every single vote counts. So please tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Uh, this is a very important race, um, it's a very important role, and we have an opportunity to bring that increased transparency that I know we all want from uh, you know our Beacon Hill leaders, our Beacon Hill politicians, and that we all so deserve. And that will happen, but it won't happen unless we all get out there, get out the vote, uh, make those contributions, uh, make sure to tell your friends and neighbors, put those signs up, go out and advocate, and I just want to say, uh, once again, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be here. Diana DiZoglio for State Auditor. Thanks again to our host, to the Bellman Tavern. Whoa. And as a former waitress who waitressed her way through college, I would be remiss not to mention to please take your bartender. Whoa.